Tyler Keller and in this video I'm going to show you how to use React Router Redux. Yep, you heard it right. React Router version 4 that's just been released uh, last month has now integrated Redux directly into the package which means you no longer need any third party tools. Uh, for those who follow my, um, my, who subscribe to the YouTube channel will possibly have seen the triple R video that I have where I've created a package that allows you to implement React Router and Redux together. Uh, you can take that, throw it in the bin and now use React Router's inbuilt support. So let's get started. Um, I have a very basic website, um, details coming to you at the top, where we have an apply page, which is a form. Click on this and we have a little bit of blocking in there, so if we try to move away it'll block. If we fill the, fill the details out, you can see that the information is going in. Then if we submit, that goes back to the home page. So we've got a bit of navigation, but also thing to note is that this is using Redux. Now the good thing about this is that time travel, if we go through this and update, we can see that the details are going through uh, into our Redux store. We can look at the state and look at the whole details. And we can also time travel and revert the changes and put them back on. However, if we move away and say okay to this because we've got blocking, then it doesn't actually go into the state. None of that is recorded. So we don't have any navigation within the time travel, which means we can't go backwards and forwards and actually get those to move around. Um, also, the information about where we are isn't in our state. Now, when you're using something like Redux, what happens is people seem to want to kind of, once you use it, you want to put everything in Redux. You don't want bits of information floating around in other places. You either try and use it for everything or you don't use it at all. That's the opinion, personal opinion and it's the opinion of others. And once you get used to it, you know that everything's in that state. But however, the URL and the um, queries and the path, all of that information is not available to you in state. And it can kind of grind against you if you're living in a Redux world. Now, I'm not going to walk you through what Redux is. There's plenty of videos. I might even do one myself on React Router. But what I'm going to do is just show you how we can actually use Redux and implement that. Here we have a standard store. We have a provider. We have everything we need for the Redux goodness, including our own reducers. And that's just getting the registration, which was the application form that you showed us. I showed you a couple of seconds ago. What I want to do now is get the components and the things that we need to implement React Router for Redux. At the moment, we're using the browser router, which is fine. But in order to do this, we actually need to use a different router, which is connected router, which will allow us to hook this up. So what I'm going to do is just swap out our existing browser router and use the connected router instead. I can do that with minimum code change with also impl importing um, the router reducer and the router middleware, which is the reducer where they store the information about what routes you're on and middleware, which actually hooks that up into history. So we now need history. So we're going to create a history item. We need ourselves some middleware. So we're going to hook up the React Router middleware, then we're going to hook up our history item. But in order to do that, we obviously need our history, so we're going to include that in. Let's take that out of there, just to get the order right. So now we've got to create history, we've got a history, and now we can actually create this item. So let's clean this up a little bit. I'm just going to move that over to the top, get it out of the way. Uh, this is just the dev tools. That's the thing where we're, when I hit F12 before, you could actually see some really pretty stuff that's happening, some pretty stuff. So I'm keeping that in. So I've got my register reducer, which is the application form. I need the router, which we're going to call router, and it's vitally important that you name it router. And we then have the router reducer, which has been taken out of our modules for React Router Redux. And I think what we need to do now is apply a middleware. So at the moment I've just got funk. Don't need to worry about what funk is if you don't know, but it's just some middleware. And I'm going to include my router middleware, which 
I should have named something a little bit better. So if all's good, I should have the core components um, imported in. I've imported the connect router, which is going to be used as a, as a different router down here at the bottom. Remember, we used browser router previously. Um, the reducer and the middleware. So that allows us to create the middleware. It allows us to inject our routing reducer into our combined reducers, which then gets created in our store. So everything now should be hooked up and ready to go. So now we've got um, React Router Redux implemented, it's time to now use the features because out of the box we should be able to see things within the, um, within the actual reducers as we're moving around. But I want to show you how to actually navigate as well. Okay, let's see if that's working. And it's not. So we've got an error with listener being undefined. Now listener is part of history, I believe. Um, so, right. With browser router, then history is already built in because it knows or it kind of infers what kind of history that you want to use. So in this scenario, you actually have to be explicit. So you want to say that you want to use this create history because you might have other history packages that you decide you want to use. So it doesn't lock you down to using this particular version. You can actually use whatever you want, which is a, a brilliant feature. So, yep, we're up and running, moving around. And if we have a look at the dev tools, we should be able to see as we move around. Excellent. Things are being pushed into root. And if we look at the state, we can see our register form. And we can see root, and we should have details like search and apply. So if I drop down out of F12 and do something like um, this name equals Bob, we should be able to see that getting applied within the state. He hopes. Yep. Search, first name, Bob. Now, one of the things to note is that when we move around, we do actually get to see that going into the root. Um, however, if we look at the navigation, we're still using the old push state. So what I'm doing is uh, when we navigate to a particular item um, within the component, we run this navigate to method, which is then calling uh, the context version of router history push. What we want to be able to do is to use dispatch instead because we want to dispatch all of our actions. So we can do dispatch and push, um, and in that scenario, it will get pushed onto the state. If I include it incorrectly, just bear with me one second. So now we've got the push, save that, we should be good to go. Yep, and as we move around, we can see that we're actually calling that action, and we're changing state. So this is a simple demo on how to use uh, React Router Redux and how to implement that into your existing Redux application. Um, all the code here is going up to the Git repository, so details coming to you at the top now. Um, and remember, if you love this, click the like button, and even better, click that lovely subscribe button. Thank you.